find out here in the practical of the first drop what comes as window from this part is either the whole of the spinal cord or the brain they can okay so they can even put it in the in your table for the window okay mm -hmm. one will be extremity one viscera can be brain or spinal cord so in the spinal cord see if they it will be put in a window they mostly ask you the external feature go to bisram singh you want to go read the four fast four five pages where you find the external feature like what the lens what are the coverings so that is important and for the cerebral hemisphere if they ask they mostly go for the areas okay. we have done that in the theory so see first thing see this is the spinal cord uh, we all know the length is 18 inches it would be more specific it is 45 centimeters in male and 43 centimeters female weight is around 30 grams okay then what happens in the spinal cord a three coverings so this is the dura okay this thick covering that is which is thin, almost stripped up from the spinal cord dura arachnoid and pyre can be marked properly in the specimen now you see one thing okay. everyone appreciate see there is a deeper fissure here compared to this part okay see there is a deeper fissure here compared to this part okay you can find here there is a deeper fissure here compared to this part see there is a deeper fissure here compared to this if you compare these two differences this is deeper and this is not deeper okay so this is the anteromedial fissure we all know anteromedial fissure is more deeper compared to posteromedial sulcus okay so this is the anteromedial fissure and even here if you mark you can see the lateral fissure see over here anterolateral over posterolateral mark this is the anteromedial fissure, this is the posteromedial sulcus, this is the anteromedial sulcus, this is the posteromedial sulcus. See, this is the anteromedial fissure, depot one, just opposite, shallow one, that is the, that one is your posteromedial sulcus, and here you can find the anterolateral, posterolateral sulcus as well. Okay, got it, huh? So, see, then what happens, you can find here these tree root like structures coming up. Okay, so what is this? This is actually the spinal nerves, there are 31 pairs of them, 8 pairs. Uh, cervical 12 pairs, thoracic 10, uh, 5 pairs, number 5 pairs, sacra, and then 1 pair of system. Okay. Then see over here, the spinal cord actually ends okay, at a certain point. See, but I am holding with the forceps. See, here you can find a conical structure. Okay. At the caudal end, you can find a conical structure that I am holding. See, there is a conical structure that I am holding. See, it is a conical structure. Okay. okay. So, this conical structure is actually called conus medullaris. When the spinal cord ends, it ends in a tapering, conical tapering, this is called conus medullaris. Then from the conus medullaris, you can find a tail-like structure emerging in the midline, okay? So this is called a phylum terminal. The phylum terminal is one of the processes of the parameter, okay? So this is conus medullaris and this one is your phylum terminal, okay? Then see so over here, you can find here uh, a bunch of structures which resemble the tail of a horse, the so caudite mena. Either they tie the uh, phylum terminal or the tidy or diapena. And when they tie the diapena, they usually ask how it forms. See, it is formed by the last 10 pairs of spinal nerve. Okay. So if you go from below, first what comes? Half oxygen, then five sacra, then lower four lumbar. So if you write it down, what it becomes? L2 to L5, S1 to S5, and coxygen spinal nerve. Or else, if you have just some depth of time, right? last 10 pairs of spinal nerves okay so remember this for your uh, spotting what is this condyquina so if they tie it the question is identify the tie structure for diagonal then how it forms okay. l2 to l5 s1 to s5 oxygen spinal nerves okay then if they tie this phylum terminal but the usual question what are its parts now how that arises see three coverings of the spinal cord dura arachnoid pia See, pia extends in the form of this phylum terminal of to the first coccygeal vertebra. Okay, because this phylum is nothing but pressure pia of the spinal cord. But the other two, dura and arachnoid, end at S2. So, there is a part of the phylum terminal of to S2 within the dura and beyond S2. That is, uh, beyond the ending of dura. So, the inner part is called phylum terminal, phylum terminal internal and the outer, outer part is called phylum terminal external. So, if they tie this phylum terminal that you can see here, this prolongation of the monos medullaris, they ask either what it is, it is a pressure parameter, or what it parts, name them. Two parts, phylum terminal internal, phylum terminal external. Okay. So, this much you need to know about the spinal cord, spotting wise. Okay. Then, what happens? We go to the brain. So, see, at the brain, you know the different parts of forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. In the fourth brain, present kephala, you get telen kephala and dian kephala. See, telen kephala only the two cerebral hemispheres that I'm holding with my hand. Okay, there are two cerebral hemispheres. Then, where you get the dian kephala? So, over here. 
see actually uh, the diet people many parts like thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus, subthalamus, metathalamus. But basically, what you can show here is thalamus and hypothalamus. See this portion midline. Okay, the thalamus. See what I'm showing with my forceps. See, see what I'm showing with my forceps. The thalamus. Okay, so, so thalamus. Okay, hypo means below. This is the hypothalamus. See, this, this is the thalamus, hypothalamus, thalamus, hypothalamus, thalamus, hypothalamus. So how I can differentiate between it? See, that's sulcus and between them. That is, these are called sulcus between them. That is called hypothalamic sulcus. Okay. So this is thalamus, this is hypothalamus intervening between the two. This is your hypothalamic sulcus. Okay. Then this forebrain is gone. Then the midbrain. Then the hindbrain. So what is? Let us see the hindbrain parts. What are the parts of hindbrain? Pons, medulla, cerebellum. Okay. So that you can find here. Okay. See over here. These two are the cerebellar hemisphere. What I'm holding, you can find here the leaf-like fully on the surface. Okay. Then this thing is your pons. Okay. This is the pons. So this is the pons. Okay. This is the pons. Okay. This thing is your pons. Okay. And this is the middle. Okay. So see, what is the hind brain? These two are the cerebellar hemisphere. Then this conical portion is the middle above that. This is the pons. Okay. So we can see the arrangement here better. See, this is at the medulla. Okay. So at lower part is the medulla, and this is the pons. What you get above it? So, okay. See, you can find the force swelling. See, we have seen this is the medulla, this is the pons, and this is the force swellings here. Okay. You can find force swellings here. These force swellings are called part of the brain. Part of the brain. Okay. So, in this specimen. This is your midbrain. Dorsal, you can find the corpora quadrigemina, upper to our supracolipula, lower to our infracolipula. Okay. Sorry, please, please. No, no, you don't want it. You handle that. Here. Okay. So, this is the supracolipula, so infracolipula, colliculi. Okay. And over here, you can find the midbrain, then the pons. Okay. Then this is the medulla. Together, these three things are the brain stem. So, what is brain stem? Above down, midbrain. Then this is pons, this is medulla. You can appreciate. This position like this, anatomical position because the corpora quadrigem is not dorsal. Okay, and the, these four things will be dorsal. Okay, and uh, medulla will be below, obviously, and midbrain above. Now, what you see here, see in the medulla, this is the midline fissure, outside side, this, this is called pyramid, this is called olive, this is called ICP. So, on this side, see pyramid, olive, ICP. Okay, so see over here in the ventral aspect of medulla, what you find, fissure is a midline, then there is pyramid, then there is olive, there is infraceptral peduncle, ICP. I am calling the ICP. Okay, so everyone clear with pyramid or even ICP? That print. This, okay, we can see. See over here. Just a bit of, see. This is midline fissure, okay. Then this is pyramid, this is olive, this is ICP. And on this side, pyramid, olive, ICP. Clear? Okay. So see, uh, if they probe the pyramid, the first question is identification of that pyramid, then how did it form? Right? The, how this elevation of swelling is formed? That is formed by the pyramidal gland. Then if they probe the olive gland, how it is formed? This one, the olive gland nucleus. Okay. And see, on the dorsal surface, see this is actually the floor of the fourth ventricle. Okay. 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 Then below that, see this is again a posterior fissure. So on towards from middle to lateral, this is called fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneate, and again I see. So ICP is shared by both dorsal and ventral aspects of the medulla. See again here, this is the midline fissure posteriorly, above that you find the floor of the ventricle. Here you can find, what you can find, see this is the uh, fascicular gracilis, then fascicular sclenata, then again the ICP. Okay, see this is the dorsal aspect of the medulla, okay. Above that you can find the floor of the ventricle, the rhomboidal structure, okay. So it's a rhomboidal fossa. Now you can find here, on ISO midline, this is fascicular gracilis, the fascicular sclenata and the ICP. ICP. Okay. So, this is what you, you get mostly in the midbrain form medulla, that is your brain stem. And here, uh, some teachers they sometimes go for the question this is floor of what ventricle. Okay. So, on either side, this is the median sulcus. Okay. Sorry, mid, this is the middle eminence okay, on either side of sulcus. And here you can find the elevation, that is facial polyculus. Okay. So, see, this is the midline sulcus in the floor of what ventricle. And here you can find the, uh, this middle eminence, and these two bulging are the facial polyculus. Okay, much. So now, see, uh, what you need to know then, see, this is the medial surface, okay, of the part cerebral hemisphere. In the cerebral hemisphere, see, what are the parts? This is your superlateral surface. This is the medial surface. And this is inferior surface. Inferior surface has got two further parts. This is orbital part and tendon. And you can find a division line between orbital part and tendon part, okay. So this is the stream of lateral surface. Because start, the lateral surface, as you can appreciate in some other brain that are disjointed, super here, uh, okay, 
orbital uh, this is here see this is again here the orbital part of the visual surface temporal surface in between them th this thing is actually your uh, stem of lateral surface then it proceeds to superlateral surface so this entire thing is lateral surface is beginning is in the impact surface and that is called stem okay so how do you get here see on this surface you can find a C like bunch of fibers a very common proof this is corpus callosum see but I am pointing with my force is a corpus callosum so they can prove it when they prove it they usually ask what type of fibers these are these are commissural fibers because they join opposite hemisphere or they ask what are its parts so, see we can show the parts here see one thing in this hemisphere uh, if, if someone asks which the anterior part with the posterior part you can tell the frontal part is anterior oxygen part is posterior but another two is see if you see the semi section the corpus callosum is so placed that its anterior end is nearer to the anterior end of the cerebral hemisphere whereas its posterior end far away from the posterior end of the cerebral hemisphere so you can naturally tell this is the anterior part okay so here this part is called your rostrum head then this angle is genu genu means angle genu literally means angle then this is the body or trunk and this is the so if they probe the corpus callosum one type of side piece what type of fibers are these commissural fibers or what are the parts these are rostrum genu trunk or body splenium now you can find a membrane okay this is the see this is the septum pellucida because just below the body of the corpus callosum this is the central part of lateral ventricle we all know lateral ventricle is the cavity of each cerebral hemisphere so where i am put the force it is the central part of lateral ventricle it has got three horns frontal horn that goes to frontal lobe uh, posterior horn that that is anterior horn that goes to frontal lobe posterior horn that goes to occipital lobe and inferior horn that goes to temporal lobe okay so see this is the anterior horn that is going towards frontal lobe okay see everyone okay so anterior horn goes towards frontal lobe this is the posterior horn okay that is going towards occipital lobe and this is the inferior horn okay that is going towards temporal lobe and the central part is body the lateral ventricle so you can find here the parts of lateral ventricle and the septum pellucidum that separates the two side lateral ventricle if you see this specimen you can find here a complete uh, septum pellucidum okay so that the cavity of the lateral ventricle is not all visible but here parts of the septum pellucidum has been taken off so you can clearly find the cavity of the lateral ventricle here okay now what else is there see over here in the cerebrum many areas and sulcus are there but what you need to mark is this this is lateral sulcus you need to mark and you need to mark the central sulcus now how to know the central sulcus first of all it is upon the superolateral surface okay second thing it is not exactly at the midpoint point five should be behind the midpoint third thing you should be always able to define a parallel sulcus in front of it and a parallel sulcus behind it so if i tell this see if i tell this the central sulcus then it is on the superlateral surface see this one okay then it is just few centimeter behind uh, the central point and you can define this sulcus in front of it and this sulcus behind it so this is central sulcus this is precentral sulcus this is post central sulcus so this is your precentral gyrus post central gyrus okay so see this is the central sulcus this is precentral sulcus post central sulcus so this is precentral gyrus post central gyrus Here, yeah, see, this is central sulcus, precentral sulcus, postcentral sulcus. This precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus. They can probe the precentral gyrus or the postcentral gyrus. Ask what is its name, either pre or postcentral gyrus, and then they ask which area broadband is there. So in the vent, see, vent motor is ventral. So on the precentral gyrus, you get primary motor in area four, and postcentral gyrus is your primary sensory area three one two. Broadband area three one two one. See here. If you see the central sulcus, just in front of it, almost all the motor is there, and just behind it, almost all the sensory is there. So this is so. Sometimes just only probe the central sulcus and ask what type of sulcus it is. It is limiting sulcus. It is a limiting sulcus because what happens in front of it, there is your all the motor areas behind that sensory. So it limits the sensory from the motor area. That is where the limiting sulcus. So even in the theory, they can ask central sulcus the dash type one. So that is a limiting surface. Okay. Now, the lateral surface you also know. Now, see the cerebral. It's not exactly intact piece, but see what you can find. You can find the two cerebral hemisphere, but I'm holding it with two hands, and you can find the junction, the formation. So, see here you can find this is super surface, the inferior surface. So here is super homus, here is inferior homus. Okay. In the formation only midline, one line from midline. Okay. Now you see here, find this fissure. Okay. Okay, so that is the horizontal fissure. This is the horizontal fissure which divides the super surface from the inferior surface. Then, if you mark the super homus, 
is it about here okay at the junction of anterior to the posterior one third this is called fissural prima so is fissural prima how to locate it go to the supraphomis locate at the junction of anterior to the posterior one third at that the major fissure is fissural prima this is fissural prima and this one is rental fissure now see here on the inferior surface you can find see see this structure this is totally different from the rest of the cerebral hemisphere see. okay this is the floccular nodular lobe and the fissure nearby it is postural fissure so what are the parts of cerebellum two hemispheres okay okay vermis in the middle two surfaces superior surface inferior surface three fissures fissura prima horizontal fissure and this one is a postural fissure okay three lobes in front of this fissura prima you get anterior lobe then between fissura prima and postural fissure you get middle or postural same thing middle lobe in cerebellum is synonymous with postural fissure. and then in front of this postural fissure you get the floconodular Okay, so what are the three lobes? Anterior, middle, or posterior profundal lobe. And on the surface of cerebral hemisphere, you can find this folia. Okay, these are the folia. And in between them, you can find the fissure. These leaf-like structures are the folia. And in between them, you can find the fissure. When they put the cerebellum as a swapping question, first thing, identify the structure cerebellum. Then the usual site will name the cerebellar nuclei. That is very easy, DEFG. Remember DEFG for your life, dentic, embolicum, fascicular globus. But what happens if you go from midline to lateral, these are paired nuclei, okay? So it is FGED. Fastigia, globus, embolicum, dentic. But if the question only name the nuclei, then by text here, write DEFG, okay? But if you want to be more specific, write from midline to lateral side, fastigia, globus, embolicum, dentic. Okay? Then last thing about the ventricles, so we have already known this lateral ventricle, okay? See, that is over here. Then see, this is the thalamus hypothalamus on one side, put the two cerebral hemispheres together, in between them, that is third ventricle. Then where is fourth ventricle? That is here, see, where I am putting the force up. That is present over here, okay? See, how the fourth ventricle located? Dorsal, that is cerebellum, ventral, that is sponsor nodule. This is the fourth ventricle. So I have told most of the major uh, spottings except one that they can often probe this occipital lobe and ask which area is your visual area primary visual area is so area 17 visual astral area is next to 1890 <laughs> 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 okay time being it was a sad time but you put it in the blank faces but that you put it in the blank faces but you put it in the blank faces but you put it in the blank faces you put it in the moral down is like and if time permits, you can go through some deeper uh, things tomorrow. Okay. Yes.